Hey guys, Backyard Scientist here. Today's video comes from a viewer named Ty. He claims that by pouring computer duster into water, it'll cause an explosion. Let's check out the video. Yep, that is definitely an explosion. He asked me to film this with my high-speed camera and see if we can figure out... Wait, hold on a second. Where'd you get that limited edition Backyard Scientist t-shirt? You're telling me you got that t-shirt from crowdmade.com slash BYS? And it's only a limited edition available for 10 days? Well, we better buy some more because I know you're going to tear that one to shreds. Anyway, computer duster is sometimes referred to as canned air, but it's not the same stuff we breathe. It's actually a chemical called 1,1-difluoroethane. It normally exists as a gas, but it's compressed into a liquid to fit inside the container. And if you use it as directed, you only get a small blast of air that comes out of there. But if you invert it and shake it around and disregard all safety warnings, you get a nice shot of pure liquid. It's kind of like a DIY liquid nitrogen gun. All right, let's get on with the first test. Three, two, one. That actually works. You can, I can't believe that actually works. It works and it works well. About a millisecond after that touches the surface of the water, it causes an explosion, throwing up water vapor and powerful enough to make the pot jump off the burner. All right, now I'm pouring the boiling water into a clear container. So we'll see what causes the explosion. Three, two, one. That water was definitely still pretty hot when it touched me. That explosion was so powerful, it shattered that plastic container. But the way it shattered it is the cool part. The way that it split it in half like that directed all the water away from the GoPro and it didn't even get wet at all. Alright, so if difluoroethane causes an explosion and it has a boiling point of negative 13 degrees Celsius, I wonder what liquid nitrogen will do because it has a much lower boiling point, but will it still cause an explosion? Oh yeah, one more thing. Before we do this, tell me down in the comment section if you think that the liquid nitrogen is going to explode or not. You think it's going to be bigger? I don't think it's going to cause an explosion. I don't think it's going to cause an actual explosion. In three, two, one. No explosion. So the liquid nitrogen didn't explode, but we have something else. We're going to try butane. Even if it doesn't work, I'm going to light it on fire, so cool. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. That didn't work in two ways. <laughs> So the butane didn't work either, but we have one more test. We're gonna see if the duster creates an explosion inside of cooking oil. All right, and three, two, one. This is freaking me out. I feel like it can just explode at any moment now. You know, I'm kind of glad that the cooking oil didn't explode because that would have been a huge mess that I just didn't want to deal with. All right, so we're doing this one more time because I have one more container that I haven't broken yet. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. <laughs> Got you some water? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that this is just a regular steam explosion, but there's still some questions that are left unanswered, like why doesn't it explode in oil, but it explodes in water? I think we need to figure something out. Okay, now let's examine the results of the experiment. The liquid nitrogen and butane tests prove that an explosion isn't exclusively caused by a temperature difference. And the oil test proved it has to be a reaction with water. Nitrogen and butane are nonpolar molecules. That means that the electrical charges inside the atom are balanced out. Difluoroethane, on the other hand, is a very polar molecule because it has two very electronegative fluorine atoms on one side of the molecule. The oxygen in water makes it a polar molecule as well. And polar molecules are attracted to each other and they interact in ways like hydrogen bonding and dipole interactions. Now, I don't know the exact reason for this explosion, but I will bet the answer lies down that road. 
Let's get a big round of applause for Nathan at mvresearch.com for letting me use his high-speed camera rentals, and thanks to Ty for showing me this cool experiment. Here's his video, and don't forget to check out those shirts guys, they're gonna be gone soon so get them while you can. See you next time, bye.